So you've made your cylinder. Let's shape it a little bit. So, you know, I'm, I've, if I want to make a bowl, I want to pull outward. If I want to make a mug, I'm going to pull more upward. Um, there are other videos that you can watch for more detail. So I'm not going to go into detail about shaping other than to say, you know, the angle and the, the shape of your hands and fingers depends. Now, if you've been pulling just with your hands sort of as a claw, you might need to change to what I'm doing here with one hand on the outside, on the right, my right hand on the outside and my left on the inside so that I can really control the shape. I do find that that sort of claw shape is limiting, especially as you get larger. So just keep in mind that the angle of your hands might need to change and adjust depending on what you're making and how much clay you're throwing. Remember, as a beginner, you want to adjust so you learn good habits and are more like flexible in how you do things. I do check the profile view from time to time. So I literally tilt my head to the right and just kind of tip downwards to see what does it look like as I'm going. So don't forget to check that because it does look different from the top view versus the side view. So you can see here I'm just slowly kind of moving my fingers outward. I never finish all the way up at the top rim, right? So I finish just at kind of the edge and that keeps the rim a little bit thicker, stronger. Um, it holds that shape. Now I often will compress the rim. Um, I use my fingers just to do so. Some people will use a chamois cloth or a piece of plastic. Now sometimes your rim will be uneven. You can trim it if you need to or as needed. I use a needle tool here. So I'm just slowly letting it slice through until I can peel off. So I don't cut all the way through at first. I let it slowly carve a line. Now if I leave it like this, these edges will become super sharp. So you cannot just call it a day. The next thing is to go back to this sort of pinching and smoothing. So I use my pointer and thumb on one hand and my pointer on the other hand to pinch and smooth the edges. And sometimes you'll get a little bit of clay left over. It might not come off in a perfect little coil like I did. Um, you can just adjust that. I am going a little bit slower at this stage because my bowl is, you know, fairly thin, so it is um, softer. Now you could also cut with a wire instead of a needle tool. This is really about preference. Um, ideally, if you have a few practice pieces, you should practice trimming as well. So I just wrap it so there's only a little bit of, um, of wire, and I really have to determinedly cut down and hold so that it just cuts right through like this. And same thing, I'm going to need to clean up the bottom, or sorry, the edge, right? So we don't want to leave the rim rough. We don't want to leave it too thin because that's just where it's going to be so much more easily broken or, or um, chipped. And you might have to go back and adjust. You can see I have a little wobble here from the um, you know adjustments that I've made and the messing around I've done with the rim. So you do need to make sure that I am mostly done shaping, but I'm not fully done because every time I touch it, I do alter it. So let's talk about finishing, right? So I've finished the top. You might have a puddle of water. Do not leave this. This will cause your clay to really deteriorate, right? The water soaks in. So I'm sucking it up with the, with the sponge and also pressing down to compress the bottom. That helps the clay particles get closer together so it is less um, likely to crack. I want to remove clay at the excess at the base. I could just use my fingers here, right? That's a great starting point. But I could also use um, other tools to do so. So like I said, I start with my fingers but a card can work really well, right? So I could get in here, but this card is a little bit difficult in terms of shape. So let's take another view. Um, and like I said, I, I do tilt my head sideways and for the profile view for finishing, I really do so. So I changed the angle here and I've cut my card. You could also use a wooden rib or modeling tool and I'm holding them at an angle. So they're not just like gonna dig in and get caught. And I always hold my tools with two hands and you can see how I'm cutting away here. I can also refine the shape and get more of a curve or angle when I'm done with the bottom. I can actually bend my cut my card. That's why I really like these just plastic gift cards because I can adjust the shape. I can cut it. They're cheap, you know. Um, and I'm really gently pressing the clay into my card. It also removes all that excess slip. If you want a really smooth surface, it can help with that. And at this point, I'm just doing kind of little finishing touches and noticing where I might need to adjust. Now, I'm, if you're, when you're done, you do still need to cut it off the bat. Hold, my, hold your wire tight, press down onto the bat, and drag it towards you. But the key thing is here, I'm not actually picking it up off the bat. I'm going to just be able to pick up the entire bat, right? That's the benefit of using a bat here because now I can make a new piece. Now, what do you do with this one? Um, when you're done throwing it on the wheel, you need to let it dry to wet leather hard. You'll have to cut it again before you actually take it off the bat. 
You're going to want to let the bottom dry because it'll be wetter and then you'll finish the bottom, which is other videos.